So here's the first Jupyter Notebook template for my uh, computational research methods class. Um, we're going to start by coming in here to provide the students with instructions. I'm debating whether to leave these learning objectives in. I'm kind of wondering if it might be helpful to, uh, to outline for students what it is they're supposed to be learning. So I think I'll leave those in for now. If I don't like them at the end, I'll, I'll remove them. Let's see here. So this is your first project report using Jupyter Notebook, using a Jupyter Notebook. Um, let's see here. Jupyter is quickly, I guess Jupyter Notebook, Jupyter's capitalized, Notebook is not. Jupyter is quickly becoming a standard means of communicating um, the results of scientific computational studies. Computational scientific studies? Yeah, I think I like that better. Computational scientific studies as it allows seamless integration of the code you develop, the results that your code produces, and your discussion of those results. This project will introduce you to using this format to accomplish each of these objectives. Oh, but I've got learning objective up there, if I keep that. Um, to develop each of these sections, each of these types of section. This project will introduce you to using this format uh, I don't like that. This project will enter it will, I don't like introduce. This project, this first project will help you become more comfortable using Jupiter. You know what, I think I need to start, I think I need to phrase this first sentence better. This is your first project using Jupyter Notebook. Sorry, not that one, second one. Jupyter is quickly becoming a standard means of communicating, of seamlessly, I just need to combine the two sentences, of seamlessly presenting the code you develop the results that your code produces and your discussion of those results. This first project will help you become comfortable using Jupyter to present these types of information. There we go. This is your first project using a Jupyter notebook, exclamation mark. Jupyter is quickly becoming a standard means of seamlessly presenting the code you develop the results that your code produces, and your discussion of those results. This first project will help you become more comfortable using Jupyter to present these types of information. Jupyter records information in cells. These cells, uh, I'm not sure what this raw NB convert does yet, so we're just gonna say these cells uh, come in primarily come in two types. Markdown, used to present written information. I don't like that code, is written information. Used to write your discussion of your work. And what do they call it? They call it code, okay. And code, the programs that produce your results. Uh, I think this can just be the discussion of your work. Yeah, the discussion of your work. This cell is a markdown cell. Please double click inside it. Let's see, this is where I run into a little bit of an issue because this is the introduction. But they shouldn't write the introduction until they are done with the work, right? And so I want them to practice double clicking 
but I don't, and, and, and editing stuff, but I don't want them to do anything with it just yet. You know what, can I, um, can I take, oops, no, sorry, wrong type of control A. Can I take this, cut and paste it up here? Oh yeah, there we go, okay. So I don't have to have my title in a separate cell. I didn't realize that before. So I can delete this cell now, come in here, Please double click inside the cell to begin editing it. You should now change the title, which is the line beginning with a hash mark, which is the line of blue text beginning with a hash mark, after double clicking inside this cell, is double clicking hyphenated? I don't think so. Is double clicking hyphen, I love autocomplete. I just, I love the assurance it gives me. Um, well, no, I asked about double clicking, not double spaced, but I guess, I guess it's the same thing. I just, I love autocomplete because it gives me this assurance that I'm not the first person to ask that question. All right, well, dictionary.com has it hyphenated, so we'll go with that. Um, after double clicking inside the cell, I hate saying you should because then I don't think students quite interpret that as an instruction. Um, change the title to include your name. And uh, let's see here, edit the title to remove the to remove the to remove everything after the dash actually no to remove template and everything thereafter and add your name after you have finished this project, you should again double click inside this cell. No, I tell you what, let's actually have them add something here. Afterwards, remove this, remove the rest of the text in this cell, including these instructions, and replace it with how do I want to say this? I, I, I want to get an idea of what they're hoping to learn from it. So maybe instead of an introduction like a report, here, here's what I'm thinking is instead of an introduction like a report, like in this project, we blah, 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 blah. I just say, tell me what you want to learn from this project and replace it with a four sentence description of what you, descriptioni, a four sentence descriptioni of what you hope to learn by completing this project. There we go. Uh, please double click inside the cell to begin editing it. After double clicking inside the cell, edit the title, which is the line of blue text, to remove, uh, yeah, let's go template and everything thereafter. Then add your name to the title. Then remove the rest of the text in this cell, including these instructions, and replace it with a four sentence description of what you hope to learn by completing this project. After that, press Ctrl plus Enter to finish editing this first cell. Ctrl Enter. All right, let's read back over it. Uh, learning objective one, learn how to use Jupyter Notebook as a project report. This is your first project report using a Jupyter Notebook. Jupyter is quickly becoming a standard means of seamlessly presenting the code. I want to say something about within the scientific community. Uh, yeah, within the science, well, I shouldn't say scientific, I don't know that everybody's using it. Within the physics community, Jupyter is quickly becoming a standard means of seamlessly presenting the code you develop, the results that your code produces, and your discussion of those results. I like that. I'm sorry for hitting control enter in the middle of reading. I forgot that that would change the 
line breaks and everything, so I'll try to remember not to do that in the future. This project will help you become more comfortable using Jupyter to present these types of information. Jupyter records information in cells. I like using the word information twice there, yeah. These cells primarily come in two types, markdown, the discussion of your work, and code, the programs that produce your results. This cell is a markdown cell. Please double click inside the cell to begin editing it. After double clicking inside the cell, edit the title, which is the line of blue text beginning with a hash mark, to remove template and everything thereafter. Then add your name to the title. Then remove the rest of the text in the cell, including these instructions, and replace it with a four sentence description of what you hope to learn by completing this project. After that, press Control Enter to finish editing this first cell. Very cool. I like it. I like it. All right, learning objective two, edit and run code. The next cell is a code cell. The next cell, following this one, just to be explicit, it's not this next cell, it's this next cell, is a code cell. Uh, in this notebook, uh, let's see here. How do I, what do I want to say about this? Um, which works exactly the same. Well, not exactly the same. The same. Which works the same way as other Python editing environments you have used. I think it's which works in the same way. Which works in the same. Uh, that's not really formally. That form, that's not really a very formal way of saying that. How about I just say similar to other to other Python editing environments you have used. All right, the next cell is a code cell similar to other Python editing environments you have used. Uh, let's see. Uh, comments are uh, added using hash marks. Do I need to put the instructions here? I wonder if I should just put the instructions in. You know what, I think I can just put these instructions in the cell here in comments now that I think about it. Let's delete that cell. Oh, I am editing. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's put in a... Oops, I went too far up. Forgot I could do that. Uh, let's see. Hash mark. Control V. Hmm, that's... Uh, that's not going to be very legible, is it? Uh, learn objective 2. This cell... <laughs> went to all that trouble is a code cell similar to other Python editing environments you have used. Uh, these lines that begin with hash marks are comments which will be ignored by Jupyter when you execute this code. Uh, learning objective two, um, edit and run code. There we go. Uh, learn how to use, uh, and so this should be, learn how to edit and run code. I don't know that I like beginning each of my learning objectives with learn how to, but uh, why don't we call practice editing and running code. I like the, the, Learning, I like the learn how to use there. Um, I guess I could just say use. There we go. Use Jupyter Notebook as a project report. There we go. Because obviously you're learning something in learning objective. Control X, Control V. Um, this cell is a code cell similar to other Python editing environments you have used. These lines that begin with a hash mark, excuse me, that begin with hash marks are comments, which will be ignored by Jupyter when you're, uh, which, Passive voice, Brian. Jupiter will ignore when you execute this code. Um, this cell includes the setup. Uh, let's see here. This cell s performs the setup for the Euler Cromer code for the Euler Cromer method that you will implement in a later cell. 
to help you learn how to edit and execute code. Is running code better or is executing code better? I guess executing is better. To help you learn how, does this have spell check? No, okay, that's fine. To help you learn how to edit and, and execute code in Jupyter, double click inside this cell and change at least, let's see, what do we have here? Mass, initial velocity, um, what, what kind of force are we gonna have here? Um, this will probably be the spring code, I'm guessing. Um, and then I give them a new force to use. Okay, yeah, let's, have, let's have this be the spring code, um, the, the spring force. Uh, double click inside this cell and change at least three physical properties. Double click inside this cell and change at least three physical properties. Oh, and what I'll do is I'll, I'll delineate physical properties with a hash mark, yes. And change at least three physical properties. Then press Ctrl plus Enter to execute this cell. Can check, I, yeah, students don't seem to know what confirm means. Check that the printed value, or that the values printed by this cell match those that you entered. So here's what I'll do. I'm gonna have one section called physical properties. You change at least three of these. And then I'll have something that's like, uh, what do I wanna call this? There, there are, there, there's gonna be some things I don't want them to change, like the DT or something like that, or the, or the vector format. Uh, or like, or like the, the 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 ball and the helix. Although I guess I could put those in the next one. Yeah, yeah. I guess I'll just call this print statements. There we go. Okay. So what are we gonna have here? I need to have the. Actually, I guess I need to give them a context, don't I? Um, for the Euler Cromer method that you will implement in a later cell to model the motion of a ball experiencing the force from a spring. Um, let's see here, then we have the print statements. Don't change these unless something is going horribly wrong. Smiley face. Maybe I should put more smiley faces in my code. Maybe students might, you know what? That would be an interesting PER study would be to give students, to be to take two sections, give one group of students smiley faces all over your code, give another group of students no smiley faces, and then compare their performance. <laughs> all right, let's have print. The ball's mass is, comma, ball underscore mass, comma, period. Copy, oops. Paste, 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 because I have one, two, three, four things going on there. The ball's initial position is ball underscore position. Ball's initial velocity is ball underscore velocity. Uh, and then I need, oh, I don't know why I copy paste it four times. I only needed four total. The springs, Stiffness is spring underscore stiffness. Print. If this matches what you wanted, please proceed to the next cell. Exclamation mark, smiley face. All right, let's hit control enter. Uh oh, this does not match what I wanted. Uh, from the Python import star. Import the V Python library. Don't change this. Next, well, don't change this next line. There we go. Control enter. Where, okay, there we go, it took a second. Uh, the ball's mass is 1.0. The ball's initial position is 100. The ball's initial velocity is 100. The spring's stiffness is 1. 
Um, let's see here. All right, I don't need spaces. I never, I never remember whether it's going to include spaces. Delete, delete, delete. And it automatically puts a space before the period. I don't know if there's anything I can do about that. Um, I, I need to specify that they can change any of these components. I guess I do specify that there. I want to specify that that's one of the three. Um, okay, yeah, yeah. I guess what I do is I say um, each component counts as one physical property. There we go. And I'll just have this over to see how badly I've messed that up. And I'm zoomed in, so I'm erring on the side of uh, making my lines shorter, but that's fine. There we go. I like that. You can change any of these components. Each component counts as one physical property. Just make sure you don't delete the vector part. Copy, and then we'll get the same caveat down here. Paste. All right. What I think I'll do here is say... Um, to help you learn how to double click inside the cell and change at least three of the, how many are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Three of the eight physical properties. Then press control enter to execute the cell. Check that the values printed by the cell match those that you uh, intended to enter. Uh, if this output matches what you wanted, please proceed to the next cell. Good. All right, next we come down to explain the use of the Euler Cromer method below. So here I come over to GlowScript. I think we're going to do ECM Spring Edit. And this is just, yeah, this is just a ball dot pause here. And we will grab, I don't need the GlowScript 2.6 v Python here, so I can just select everything else, Control C to copy, come over here, give myself a bit of space, Control V to paste. All right. Uh, I don't think I need to include the graph command. I guess I'll find out in a second when I run this. But I have x underscore graph equals the G curve stuff here, so this is going to create the graphs. This creates the ball. Now here, they don't have the line numbers. Is it possible to turn on the line numbers? Uh, let's see, run cell, cell type, cell outputs, insert, view, toggle line numbers. Hey, all right. Wow, that's cool. I'll have to remember to do that in all of mine. Um, okay, I'll update this line number stuff in a second. Um, let's see here. So what I need is to set this pause equal to ball underscore position. And then I need to set velocity equal to ball underscore velocity, right? Those are the names I used above because it remembers everything that I put into this cell. And so it'll carry ball underscore position and ball underscore velocity down here, ball underscore position, ball underscore velocity. And then I, and I can also give it the mass. Mass equals ball underscore mass. Cool. Yeah, ball underscore mass is what I called it up there. And so now I can delete this part. Uh, oh, except I wrote this in terms of momentum to match matter and interactions. Um, yeah, we can just we can have this be momentum because. The, the, the ball, the sphere object doesn't care about what you call everything else. It just cares that you have a, P a POS. Um, so let's call this momentum. I will rerun everything at the end to make sure that it runs fine. Leave myself a note. To do that, Brian, rerun everything at the end. Smiley there. If I give myself smiley faces, that's nice. Um, okay. I should have pasted this in first. I wouldn't know when to call everything up there. Uh, so I don't need this part. Don't need this part. I do need this part. I don't think it's necessary to have them set the initial time and the delta t. I think we can probably leave that as it is. Um, okay, so while time less than... Oh, I guess I could... I can't, I can't have it run forever because otherwise they won't get any results. Um, they won't be able to discuss any results. So I guess let's call this max time. And let's have this come up here 
max underscore time equals 15. You can ch you ca you can change this uh, to any positive value. And then we'll have control copy control oops down control paste. The code will run for max underscore time seconds, and I like that because I like having the print statements this way because then it basically explains to the students what everything is down here. So rather than clog up the space with a bunch of um, comments about this is the mass, this is the position, it just spits it out down here. And then the student says, oh, that's what that meant. I can go back up here and change that. Although I would think they these names would be pretty self-explanatory, but you never know, you never know. Okay, um, let's see here. Uh, I have a rate of 200. That should be fine. We shouldn't need to change that. Um, okay, so I need to change this a little bit. This needs to become spring underscore stiffness times ball dot pause. Momentum equals momentum plus force times delta underscore t. Do I want this to be force or do I want this to be ball dot force? I think it's fine to leave it as force. Uh, momentum, this needs to now be ball dot momentum. So let's copy ball dot momentum or ball dot. You know what? I changed my mind. Let's call it ball dot force. It is the ball. It is the force on the ball. Ball dot pause equals ball dot pause plus ball dot momentum divided by ball dot mass times delta t. Update time. Update the graphs. Confirm that the program is finished. Okay, I think I like this. So let's uh, update our instructions in here. Control X. And then I can simply delete this cell. Learning objective three. Oh, I did want them to explain the use of the other method. Never mind. Does, does undo apply to deleting cells? Nope, it just applies to editing cells. Okay, well, that's fine. I believe what I need to do here is double click inside here and then add a cell and it adds it afterwards. Okay, and this needs to be markdown. Control paste. Learning objective number three. The code cell below <gasps> contains the same Euler uh, implementation of the Euler-Cromer method. The code cell below contains the same implementation of the Euler-Cromer method presented in, and then I'll put a link to the video, to solve for the motion of a ball under the influence of a spring force. Review this code cell. Review this code cell and answer. Let's see, do, how do I want to do this? Do I want them to just explain how it works or do I want them to answer specific questions? I think I want them to answer specific questions at this point because they probably haven't seen it for a while and they probably need, yeah, they probably need specific questions. I can exit that and answer the following questions in this markdown cell. Review the code cell below. All right, what kind of questions do they need to ask? Um, right, well, let's see here. Number one, what information is displayed in the graph that the, what, this, what information will be displayed in the graph that the code will produce? Two. Um, let's see, because I have some of the explanation in here. So maybe I actually get rid of the explanation in here. What happens step by step inside the code's while loop? Three. Well, let's ask them something about scalars and vectors. Um, how can you be certain that the variables ball dot force, ball dot momentum, and ball dot pause will always be vectors? Hint, think about how they are calculated. And basically what I want them to say 
is that there's a vector on this side, so this must needs be a vector. This is a vector and this is a vector, so this must needs be a vector. This is a vector and this is a vector, so this must needs be a vector. Okay, I think that's good. Three questions, one about uh, the information we're gonna get, one about um, kind of an overview of the process, and then one about uh, variable types. I think that's good. I think that's good. Th those are all three important steps in, in the euler Cromer method there. Balls, initial momentum, there we go. Uh, control enter on you. Control enter on you. Program is finished. Where's my visuals? You start the kernel. You start. Let's try this. Control enter. Now control enter. Okay, I had to restart the kernel. There we go. Oh, I never actually tell them to run the code. Um, let's see. Do 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 do. I guess I should have them run the code here. Review the code in the cell below and run it. Um, you might need. To re, how, what, is it restart or recompile the kernel? Restart the kernel. To restart the kernel by clicking the circle arrow icon above. All right, except the problem is they need to do that before, I don't want them to have to recompile this part. So here's what we'll do is uh, I'm gonna take that part about restarting the kernel do a control X then we come down here and we say run it if there is no visual output try clicking on the double arrow icon above to restart the Jupiter kernel and uh, run the entire sheet run the entire Notebook. Learning objective four. Discuss the results of the Euler-Kromer method. The analytical... Uh, no one will say that. Calculus tells us... That's how you say the analytical solution to, a, to an undergrad. Calculus tells us that a ball experiencing a harmonic... A, a spring force should oscillate back and forth. I know oscillate back and forth is redundant, but it helps the students remember what oscillate means. With a period given by, and here we'll put in some LaTeX, T equal, right, and this is where I have to make sure I do this correctly. So the Angular frequency is given by root k over m. This is the only one I ever remember, and then I have to figure out the others. And omega is 2 pi over t, which means that t is 2 pi over omega. t equals 2 times pi times the square root of the fraction of this thing inverted, because I'm taking one over omega. So I need m over k. Oh, this need to be uh, curly braces, excuse me. Where, uh, let's see here. Um, not, not, you don't need a slash for that. Where m is the ball's mass and K is the spring's stiffness. Calculate the value of T. Calculate the period that your that the ball in this code should have. And then we'll italicize should. <laughs> should also should have. Does it uh, let's see, how well does it match the period displayed in the graph above. Cool. By the way, this is Epic Pen that I'm using. Pretty cool program. I think I'm done with that part though, so I can clear that. Double click in this cell and replace these instructions with your answer and ex with your uh, with an explanation of your work and your answer. 
by the way, note that the fancy math script is provided by LaTeX, which you can learn about at learn about at there. Provided is is created with LaTeX. Um, just surround your LaTeX. So surround your LaTeX content with dollar signs and Jupiter. I'll make it pretty. Oh, I guess it's fancy earlier. Fancy. There we go. Last part I need to do is here. Last part I need to make is here. Learning objective five: copy and modify the older Chrome method to solve a new problem. Okay, so here uh, each student is going to have a unique force um, in class. You have been assigned a force to investigate using the Euler Cromer method. I think method gets capitalized there. Um, in the code cell below, copy and paste. Well, you're not doing that there. Uh, paste in the Euler Cromer method from the code cell above and modify it to replace the spring force with the force you were uh, with the force you were assigned. Then run the code and proceed to the last section below to the last cell below. Paste the Euler Cromer method here. All right, and so here, yes, Brian, write everything at the end. Discuss the results of the Euler Cromer method. Um, let's see here. What do I want to do? What do I want to do? Uh, replace these instructions with a discussion of the following questions. How is your how does the, uh, let's see here, describe the motion of the ball that results from your assigned force. Two, how is this motion similar to and different, different, different from the motion that results from the spring force? Three, does the ball, uh, let's see here, oscillate? as before or does it uh, fly away and never return question mark there we go I like that and now Brian is going to rerun everything to make sure that it works so we're gonna come up here we're going to restart the kernel and rerun the whole thing all right I like it and I reran everything at the end so I can get rid of the note to myself so there is our first project we are ready to go I am ready to have a one grade assigned in this class at the very least. <laughs>